It Was a Shit Show is easily one of the most popular Crazy Ex-Girlfriend songs. It has 2.4 million views on YouTube and 3 million listens on Spotify. It encompasses some of the best qualities of the show's songwriting. It's witty, subversive, sad, and catchy. But in addition to that, it's also a perfect thesis for the show and foreshadows some of Rebecca's biggest breakthroughs to come. The song is a fundamental undoing of the kinds of thinking that have brought Rebecca to where she is at this point, in West Covina, in the middle of a turgid, melodramatic love triangle. Until now, she's plotted out her life according to the familiar, reassuring templates of her favorite stories. She's the quirky, romantic lead, fielding fate and funny mishaps in her search for love. And just when she thinks she's found it, her entire worldview gets flipped on its head. When you've conceived of your life as a carefully directed movie, what happens when your lead walks off set? Among Rebecca's favorite things are two and a half star movies, musicals, and the movie Slumbered. And these aren't just her favorite things, but models for how she thinks life ought to go. And these models are especially characterized by drama, grand gestures, and climactic moments, specifically when it comes to love. Love and Rebecca are a complicated duo. It's something she feels perpetually starved of, chasing it to fill what seems like this bottomless well. What Rebecca needs, or what she thinks she needs, is to be loved so loudly, so dramatically, that she can have no doubt in her mind that it's real. So, naturally, the fictional love that she idolizes is as loud and desperate as her, which works for the purposes of those particular genres. Musical theater is dramatic by nature and creates climaxes to justify the presence of a song. Angst and drama exist in stories, especially romance, because they're meant to entertain. High peaks and low valleys make for a fun roller coaster. This is how Rebecca sees the world. Everything is heightened, which isn't inherently a bad thing. In many ways, this can make life especially beautiful to intensely feel its highs and lows. The problem is being tethered almost exclusively to those highs and lows. Since moving to West Covina, Rebecca has been waiting for, or more accurately, engineering her climactic moment. And it's when she first gets it, at the end of season one, that it's most apparent how flawed this pursuit is. Let's look at what brought us here. Rebecca's moved on from Josh and confessed her serious feelings to Greg. This is huge. For a moment, it seems as though she's let go of the fantasy, moving towards something a little more grounded. But as it sometimes goes, Greg's own fears get the better of him, and she ends up alone. But as if it's meant to be, Valencia breaks up with Josh just at the right moment. And there it is. That's the song. Rebecca's favorite saccharine, generic love song is Diegetic, which she takes as a confirmation that not only was her pursuit of Josh not crazy, it's right. Underscored by Disney Princess Leia Salonga herself, in a disaster of a night, this is how the story goes. In one indescribable instant, the whole world falls away. She gets what she wants. But this is anything but a perfect moment, and it's clear why. Firstly, this moment comes at the cost of Greg and Valencia, two real people, not props to further Josh and Rebecca's delusion. The two of them jumping into each other's arms minutes after being dumped might be a sign of some underlying issues to address. There's also the implications of the song itself as it reflects Rebecca's beliefs, framing romance as the culmination of one indescribable instant, a moment suspended in time without substance. I'm gonna declare my love to a prince and it's gonna be oh so romantic, a perfect moment which is a fundamentally flawed way to perceive love, connection, or really any significant life event. And most of all, there's a crucial piece missing. Despite what the song says, significantly and for good reason, she doesn't get an I love you. So, understandably desperate for her story to get back on track, Rebecca begins season two begging and scraping to find reasons Josh must love her, but the relationship that grew out of a magical moment in season one stands on very fragile legs. And so, when it falls apart, she turns, once again, to two and a half star movies for an answer. Think about how the story is played out. So I moved to West Covina in love with someone else, and he's the sarcastic messed up bartender that calls me out of my stuff, and I ignore him, but we have undeniable chemistry. And now, Josh and I break up. 
and it's about me and Greg. And they give her one. Of course, how could she have missed it? It's Greg, the other unlikely guy who's been there all along. With the confidence of someone who's seen the whole script, she posits this, too, as though it's inevitable. I mean, him and me getting together, it's the most obvious thing in the world! The way Rebecca casts Greg in her narrative is dysfunctional at the outset. He's the underdog, which is just a nicer way of saying second choice. The few times she refers to Greg in episode titles, it's not even by name. It's as Josh's friend. Which highlights the big problem. By conceiving of Greg as the underdog, she turns the norms of their relationship, back and forth, disregard, heartbreak, into a cute trope. Even more enticingly, this allows her to absolve herself of responsibility. These aren't things she's doing, this is just how their story goes. But obviously, Greg is a person who's been hurt by Rebecca's indifference and indecision. In fact, her reliance on stories to tell her what to do is a symptom of this very indecision. She looks for direction outward because she's too scared, or doesn't know how, to ask herself what she actually wants. And this boils down to a lack of self-trust, which, consequently, makes it hard to trust her. In her supposed revelation about Greg, Rebecca's just swapped one fantasy for another. She's so thrown by him leaving. How could he, just when she's realized he's the one? But no worries, she's seen this film before. She just has to run and stop him. She makes the mad dash to the airport and arrives in the nick of time. Perfectly on script. Except it's not at all. According to Rebecca's last model for romance, The only words you'll need are I love you. I love you is an endpoint, a culmination. But when she finally does hear those words, from Greg no less, there is, actually, quite a lot more to say. If Rebecca's chosen, recognizable pop culture genres are predicated on climaxes, Shit Show subverts them all as the ultimate anti-climax. The song doesn't end with an I love you and a kiss. It begins with an I love you and ends with a wordless goodbye. Greg turns away, denying the song its last note, letting it taper off instrumentally. The last line remains unsaid, the final rhyme left hanging. It means you love me. Of course I love you. This is what it's all been about. Even during their picture-perfect moment, she couldn't get these words from Josh. But now, this thing that Rebecca has craved, engineered, and idolized so much- See, that's what I love about you. You love me? Is just a plain statement. It's the first line of the song. Of course, I love you. Greg does what she hasn't been able to do, and won't be able to do for a while. Acknowledge multiple contrasting things at once. You and I have had some great moments together. But in between that, it got confusing and hard and bad for both of us. Of course I love you. And this thing we had was a hot mess. And I still have to leave. Of course I have to leave. And I still love you. And these are just posed as these equal, self-evident truths. The song is a study of dissonance. In typical Crazy Ex-Girlfriend fashion, the lyrics and the music are saying two very different things. It sounds like one thing, but means another. Sweeping strings and a blunt, decisively unromanticized perspective on a relationship. Furthermore, this is just a ballad, not a parody or an homage. There are no costumes, no dance number. Because there's nothing to reference here. Rebecca can't categorize something that takes her this much by surprise. This kind of balanced thinking that Greg uses is Rebecca's Achilles heel. For her, things have to be simpler. People who love you can't leave, and people who leave can't have loved you. Which tracks with her later response to his departure. I hope he dies. If he ever comes back, I'm just gonna be like, die! If she can't love him, she must hate him because she has no model to understand why Greg is doing what he's doing, that someone can love her and not choose her, that these things can coexist. Rebecca arrived at the airport with this false ultimatum in her mind, that she just has to catch up and stop him, and then Greg will stay. But the song ends with the same anticlimax it began with. She does make it, and he does leave. 
which makes Shit Show an inversion of Rebecca's inciting incident. Rebecca ends up in West Covina by anchoring herself to another person, with no other ambitions but him. Now, Greg's ex begs for him to stay for her, and despite wanting to, Greg follows his ambitions out of West Covina. In West Covina's petri dish of emotionally immature people, Greg is the first of those to get out and stay out. Despite the fact that the timing of this exit had to do with Santino's schedule, the decision is still in character and works for the story. Rebecca upended her life to choose someone wrong for her. Greg chooses himself. Something Rebecca will struggle with for a long, long time. Which is wild. Because for how selfish so many of her actions are, they're also completely opposed to Rebecca's actual well-being and authenticity. She constantly disregards her needs and modifies her personality in order to be chosen by Josh and by others. She pretends to like things that she doesn't, changes her sense of humor, values, ambitions. She puts her friendships, her work, her dignity in jeopardy. And for what? Because Josh made me feel warm inside, like glitter was exploding inside me. For a good portion of the show, Rebecca is driven by this impulse and instant gratification. She was chasing Josh, but really, she was chasing a feeling. The excitement of being in some grand love story, at the whims of its highs and lows like chemical hits. Josh is just a vehicle, a character who she has to fix and post to even fit him into the story. But in this song, Greg sidesteps this dangerous tendency to romanticize things based on how they feel. We have chemistry, of course, but that's a formula for divorce. When this season makes explicit the addictive nature of this behavior by paralleling Rebecca and Greg, it positions him to be the perfect person to understand her desperation. Whether it's alcohol or- My first sip felt like, I, it, I don't know, the glitter was exploding inside of me. Or chaotic relationships. I ran into Josh, he made me feel warm inside, like glitter was exploding inside me. They don't consider the long-term effects, but how it feels in the moment. Hence why it's huge that here, ambushed at an airport, Greg does something else. He acknowledges what he viscerally wants and still is able to choose something better. The thought of staying is so enticing. And it's in fact her enthusiasm for the idea that lets him know it's the wrong one. And when you say that I should stay, that's exactly when I should split. The People can end up in serendipitous situations, create meaningful moments, and still not be a good fit for a healthy relationship. Even more so, people can feel a powerful connection, want each other, and still not be the right choice. At least, maybe not right now. And Greg avoids Rebecca's other tendency, to demonize things wholesale once they don't go her way. Because the song isn't just a roast. No, that would be too easy. If Greg just says, hey, you suck, I'm leaving, that she could at least rationalize. Instead, he makes it even more complicated. He acknowledges his feelings without reservations. He admits how special even this shit show was to him. The song neither glorifies or vilifies the relationship. It just calls it what it is. In fact, this does end up being more nuanced than Rebecca can initially handle. Once she's back home, she quickly compartmentalizes their conversation. He left and he called our relationship feces. But at this point, she's heard it. Greg intimately understands some of Rebecca's worst tendencies and refutes them point by point over the course of a three and a half minute song. She's seen what's possible. And so have we. It's important to note that Rebecca does pull herself back from the precipice at the end of episode four. I understand why you had to leave West Covina and someday I will be happy for you. But as is often the case, some things have to be learned multiple times. And this isn't the last time Rebecca will have to confront the limits of her worldview. To this point, Rebecca has been only able to see things in extremes as either amazing or devastating. Now she's presented with this romantic ballad, the lyrics of which detail how shitty a relationship was. Nothing is going the way she expected. This is not what I want. This is not what I planned. Which is exactly what the show is about. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend is about a lot of stuff, but one theme it's particularly interested in is that of living with expectations. 
Rebecca only gets Josh by sheer brute force, without pausing to consider if she and Josh are actually compatible. When she does start to intuit that maybe they're not actually a good match, she ignores and violently pushes down her own sense of uncertainty. Because this is what's supposed to happen, right? Because if Josh isn't right, if every love kernel, every sign, that meeting in New York wasn't leading to this, what then? What can she make of her life? I don't know what story I'm in anymore, you know? This isn't to say that we can never have expectations of any kind or ever get our hopes up. Being closed off and cynical is just another extreme. But there's a degree of attachment to expectations that can rob us of the natural experience of life's ebb and flow. Because there's this inherent agitation that comes with being fixated on outcomes. I know it myself all too well. Happiness and expectations aren't necessarily diametrically opposed, Both. but they can be. Constantly believing that once we get a certain milestone or person, then that sense of happiness and fulfillment will follow. And sometimes it does. Certainly things like financial stability are a prerequisite to peace of mind. But to keep treating milestones as necessities for happiness means we'll always be looking elsewhere than where we are. Rebecca pursues Josh just out of pure want, without considering what a lifetime with Josh would materially look like. But here, at the airport, Greg thinks it all through. He momentarily gets wrapped up in the moment, in the feelings. Oh, what the hell? Let's get a hotel. Cause life is short and we're not getting any younger. And then reflects. What happens next? I mean, in the long run. Greg is one of Rebecca's many mirrors, characters with whom Rebecca's arc occasionally rhymes. So all of Greg's breakthroughs in this song foreshadow Rebecca's ability to do them herself. And I don't just mean foreshadow in the sense of literary analysis. Ahab, can't you see? The whale is a metaphor. But in the very practical sense that we learn from the people around us. And what Greg really acknowledges in this song, wanting one thing and choosing another, will become one of the major markers of Rebecca's growth. For Rebecca to maintain her story, she's expected and needed certain people to be her love interests, her enemies, her sidekick. But time and again, people grow out of categories that never fit them in the first place. And it's those parts of her life that she never could have planned that actually end up being the most fulfilling. It may not be as exciting, but enduring love might actually be quiet, mundane, and in unexpected places, without necessarily making narrative sense. This is all stuff she hasn't quite realized yet, but she will. And this is where it starts. <laughs> 